Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to How To Your Gavin. I'm so excited to do my first middle grade video in such a long time. I can't even remember the last one I made. Maybe it was my favorite middle grade to 2021 video. Maybe? Either way, I am so excited to be back again with a middle grade video. And in this video, I'm gonna go through the 20 middle grade books that I need to read start. I have barely been reading middle grade this year. I decided I wanted to take a little bit of a break from middle grade. And so I haven't really made any content featuring middle grade recently. But I do have like 12 current middle grade books that are on my immediate TBR, as well as eight upcoming books. So I do have proofs for six of them and there are two that I am desperate to get my hands on. So if any other publishers are watching this, and not only are these 20 books on my immediate TBR, if I don't read them by the end of this year, then I have to unhaul them. <laughs> Essentially, I'm giving these books a time limit, a time frame before I have to get rid. But I really don't want to get rid of any of these. So this is making me want to read them that much more, okay? So I was going through my shelves, like, which middle grade books am I the most excited for? So I pulled off all of the ones that I was the most excited for. There are so many more. I mean, you've seen how many I own. I have so many more, but these are all of the ones that I am desperate to read right now. I am not including any sequels. I feel like that is its own video. Like there are so many that I could do for it in its own video. And it's the same with the upcoming books as well. Like I'm not including any really highly anticipated sequels because I could probably do its own video for that too. So these are all pretty much standalones or the start of a series and I'm excited so let's get straight into the video but before I do don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoy it and subscribe if you haven't already. So the very first one is Onyeka and the Academy of the Sun by Tola Okogu and this is one that I have just picked up. It has beautiful sprayed edges from Waterstones and just like all the books in this video it sounds incredible don't touch the wire. So this one follows Onyeka and she has the ability to control her hair with her mind. Effectively, she has superpowers. Onyeka is then taken to the Academy of the Sun, which is in Nigeria. And it's a school where a lot of other children are and they have superpowers too. It's a little bit X-Men-esque. There is apparently a battle looming as well, like a very epic battle. And I think this might be the first in a series. I believe there is another one coming next year. If you hear any noises in this room, it is because my cats are about to stand on my laptop. Please don't. <laughs> What was I saying? You're so distracting, yes? So yes, I do believe there's a sequel coming out next year. So this could end up being another one of my favorite series and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Then I have one that I've mentioned a couple of times because I got a proof of it in a book haul and then I got the final copy in a book haul. But that one is Zoe and the Forest of Secrets by Alec Pilgrim. This one is published by Knights Of and Knights Of is my favorite publisher. I absolutely love them. So this one follows Zoe and I believe she lives in a small village and there is a forest that surrounds it. And one day she decides to run away from home and she enters the forest thinking that she will be able to navigate her way through because she knows the forest inside and out. However, strange creatures appear, warped visions appear, and the forest is not what it seems. Before long, she ends up coming across a lost boy, I believe, and also an abandoned facility. So she's hoping that there are some answers to what's happening, the strange things that are happening in this abandoned facility. Ah. It's Nights Of, so you know it's gonna be fantastic. The next one is The Consequence Girl by Alistair Chisholm, and I absolutely adored Orion Lost and Adam Two. I loved both of those books, and this is Alistair Chisholm's third book. They're all standalone, though, so you can read them any order. So this one is set in the world of Colony, and it is in ruins, and I believe not a lot of people know why. It's kind of like a futuristic dystopian. No one knows what caused society to tear itself apart. However, the answer lies within a young girl called Cora. Don't touch my coffee kids. There are lots of people looking for Cora and she is, I love you so much, and she is running away from these people and she doesn't know what they want to, uh, to do with her. This is not comfortable. Ow. Your nails are in me, Ash. Ow. <laughs> Why you decided to hurt me? <laughs> I thought you loved me. Oh my god. Now I've got freaking Tobu on my strings. So yeah, Cora has to try and escape from these people and it sounds really good and I love Alistair Chisholm's work so much. Next is Scandal and the Unicorn Thief by E.F. Stedman. I, again, have been really wanting to read this for a while now, and I have had colleagues who have read this who don't usually read middle grade and absolutely adored it, so this is everything I needed to push me to read it. There has been a huge marketing campaign for this as well, so it's likely that this book is gonna be very, very big, and yeah, I should have read it long before now. So we follow Scandal Smith, and he's only ever wanted to be a unicorn rider. It's almost like How to Train Your Dragon-esque, 
ish where there is you know unicorns and you can bond with the unicorn and train this unicorn ride the unicorn things like that however an enemy has stolen one of the most powerful unicorns from this community and Skandar wants to be a hero and wants to find out what's happened wants to save this unicorn and this is filled with elemental magic you know sky battles loads of great stuff so don't let the word unicorn put you off this is like epic unicorns okay so I'm excited Ash is excited as well he's currently on my knee if you can see him yet there you go are you excited for this one yes and then I also have Hedgewitch by Sky McKenna this one again has been on my TBR since it came out a couple of months ago one thing I love about this book as well and sorry just let me be a bit superficial okay is under the dust jacket this is Hedgewitch under the dust jacket and it is stunning even Ash Ash is like what that is gorgeous you could go exploring you know this room's very big but you've decided to just lie on me instead. Oh, that makes me feel so special. So we follow Cassie who for years has been waiting for her mother to return home. So she ends up running away from boarding school and I believe she has a talking cat and a broomstick to help her and she ends up finding the village of Hedley. Or is it Hedgley? Hedgley, sorry. There she meets the hedge witch who watches over the hedge and she begins to learn and train from her, you know, in all of the art of witchcraft. And I love anything to do with witches, so you know that I'm really excited for this one. And now that I am a dad to two kittens, I feel this whole talking cat element even more. Like these cats talk to me all the time. They call me names behind my back. Yeah, I don't think I haven't heard because I have. See, look at that face. Look at that face. You know. You know you've been caught. The next one is A Flash of Fireflies by Aisha Bushby. I love Aisha's previous works and this one is no exception. I'm so excited. This one feels very cottage core, fairy tale middle grade. We follow Hazel who moves to England and she ends up staying in this cottage that looks like it's been plucked straight from a fairy tale. Hazel is trying to adapt to this new environment but she is struggling and there are dark creatures I think looming in the shadows and with it being quite a short one I just know that this one's just gonna go straight to the point. It's gonna pack every punch and it's gonna be just as amazing as Aisha Bushby's previous books. So very excited and yeah that's another one for that author which again is a standalone. I believe you don't need to read Aisha Bushby's other ones but it is pretty much a uh, part of her bibliography. Next I have My Friend the Octopus by Lindsay Galvin. I read Darwin's Dragons I think it was January last year January 2021 and I really enjoyed it and I love the vibe of that one so I hope the vibe stays for my friend the octopus. Love the cover so much and I love that it's French flaps too and it has the kind of historical looking information on the octopus and the chapter headings also have illustrations like that. I love it when a publisher goes all out. So this one is set in England in 1893 and we follow Vinnie whose mother is a high society milliner. Vinnie however ends up getting sent to live with her aunt in Brighton and she starts sketching the sea creatures that are in the aquarium. One of the sea creatures in this aquarium is an octopus and this girl I think bonds with this octopus and there are other things that go on in this as well. I'm not 100% sure until I read it but again I really enjoy Darwin's Dragons so I do think that I'm going to enjoy this one just as much as brand new and again love the cover. And I just love how Ash has moved on to the other knee. <laughs> oh next we have one that I think's been out a little while but I got it from a beautiful subscriber I think maybe at the end of last year, start of this year, and that is The Bookshop of Dust and Dreams by Mindy Thompson. Ever since hearing the synopsis of this one, and just the look of the cover, the vibe of it, it just sounds like it's gonna be so magical, whimsical, everything I love about middle grade. So this one is set in New York in 1944, and we follow Poppy, whose family owns this magical bookshop that caters to all different people from different time periods, from different places of the world, and it just sounds like, you know, it's kind of this hub of really different characters. So customers could come from the past, from the future, and it is set near the end of World War II. So we have that as a backdrop. Oh. So this family must never use the magic of the bookshop for themselves, and Poppy's older brother Al, his friend dies in World War II, so Al wants to use the magic of the bookshop to save him, but Poppy is like the only person standing in the way. So Poppy is torn between doing the right thing in terms of the bookshop and the rules that are enforced there, or follows her heart and helps her brother. So I'm excited to see what her decisions are, I'm excited to see what happens, and yeah, it just sounds like it's going to be both heart-wrenching and wonderful. I'm slowly getting further and further down because Torbill will not stop playing with the strings. 
Next, I have The Witch, The Sword and The Cursed Knights by Alexandria Rogers. This is another recent one on my TBR. I think this one is like new-ish, but the sound of it is fantastic. So this is set in a world where witches are the most hated creatures in society. An arming character is 12-year-old Ellie, and she is a witch. Ellie applies to the Fairy Godmother Academy so that she can change how people perceive her. However, she is drafted into the Knights of the Round Table by King Arthur. There is a curse that's going on as well and Ellie meets a, a boy and they both set on a quest to reforge the lost sword of Excalibur. Anything to do with Camelot, Merlin, King Arthur, any of that sounds right up my street. So this one is, oh, I just love the look of it so much. It just looks so fantastic. Next, I have Magic Born by Peter Bunzel. And Peter Bunzel is the author of the Cogheart Adventures. So it's set in 1726, and there is somebody who is hunting people who are born with magic. We follow Tempest and Thomas, and they have been captured and taken to Kensington Palace. So Tempest and Thomas turn out to be the last prince and princess of Fairyland. I think they just have to go on an adventure, rediscover who they are, bring about magic, things like that. I don't really know a whole lot, but it is one that I have had my eye on since it got announced, and I'm glad I finally own a copy of it. Okay, the next two books that are on my current TBR before I talk about the upcoming books have been on my TBR for a while, so I definitely have to read them by the end of this year, or I will have to get people to intervene. I will ask my patrons to intervene, make sure that I read these, because it's ridiculous now. But the first one is The Legend of Pock and Wania by Kieran Lawwood. This one is the first book, I think in the is it Five Realms? In the Five Realms series. And honestly, the amount of times people have told me this is incredible. It's so underrated as well, but the amount of times it's had such a good review, people have told me to read it, is phenomenal. So this is like set in like a village that's built and run by rabbits. And like these rabbits are obviously talking and it's a little bit Watership down s but without the trauma. We follow Podkin who is the son of the Chieftain and the Warren gets attacked by the Gorm which is the most terrifying enemy to the rabbits. It sets off this huge epic adventure that spans I think there's six books so far. And I feel like the whole vibe of it, you know, like an animal story but filled with epic adventure and you know, all of that. It sounds right up my street, so why I haven't read it yet is anyone's guess. This one looks really good, and I'm excited to read the entire series. And the other one I've put on my TBR, like an official TBR, like two or three times, my laptop. And that is The Merry Begot by Julie Hearn. People who have been longtime subscribers are probably sick of me right now talking about this. I have mentioned this a couple of times about how excited I am to read it, and yet I still haven't read it. This looks like an incredibly gothic, spooky, atmospheric middle grade. And it was recommended by Michelle Harrison who wrote the Pinch of Magic series. So this is set in a small village where rumors of bad witchcraft are spreading. And everyone in this village seemed to be pointing their finger at a young girl called Nell. There is a witch finder general on the way too, and Nell could be in deep danger. So it'll be interesting to see like how this unfolds and how dark it gets for being a middle grade. Ow, Tobu! With a cover illustrated by Carl James Mountford too. Like, oh, it's stunning. But again, I've been meaning to read it for the longest time. So I do have eight books that are upcoming. I own six of them as proof copies, art copies, and there are two that are just... Oh, I'm so excited that I could combust that I want to mention. I mean, these aren't all the middle grade books I'm excited for that are coming out. But again, keep in mind, these are just either the first in a series or standalones, no sequels. The first of which are Nura and the Immortal Palace by M.T. Khan. So this one follows Nura, who has worked in the Mika Mines, and she is desperate to find the Demon's Tongue. The Demon's Tongue is a legendary treasure that has been buried deep underground. There is a terrible accident that happens, and one of Nura's best friends gets trapped, so Nura has to try and save them. While trying to save her friend, Nura comes across the enchanting and treacherous realm of the Jinn. This one is going to be the first in a series, and it comes out in July. Ow, Tobu! The next one, and it comes out the same month, is Spell Stoppers by Cat Gray. I love the colours of this. I love the kind of, you know, yellow and green. I love this colour scheme. This one, and I think one of the upcoming ones, is giving me Malamanda vibes by Thomas Taylor. But this one is set in a seaside village, and it is filled with magical folk, and there is a floating castle that dominates the entire village. However, this castle is falling apart, and the village beneath is in danger, so they need a spell stopper in order to fix it. So we end up following Max, who is just a trainee, but he has the power to drain mischievous magic. But I feel like this is kind of like a common 
coming of age story and he's trying to kind of control his powers. So that sounds really fun. Really excited for that one. The next one is coming out in August and that is Mia and the Lycasters by Janelle McCurdy. This one is in a world where there are Umbras and I think Umbras are terrifying creatures and Mia has always dreamed of being an Umbra tamer. She ends up having a really terrifying encounter with one of the Umbras and it puts her off and she is scared of them and she tries to keep safe within the walls of her village. However, there is a surprise attack. Her parents are taken and Mia goes on a quest to save her parents. It says on the back here, it's perfect for fans of Amari and the Night Brothers. Yes. The Legend of Pokemon One Year, which, you know, I have in this stack and Nevermore. And I love Nevermore so much. So yeah, this one sounds like it's going to be a really big one as well. And I can't miss out on this one. So again, August 2022. Next is another one that reminds me of Malamanda, and that is Alex Neptune, Dragon Thief by David Owen. And this one comes out in August 2022 as well. So this one, for the longest time, Alex has always thought that the sea was trying to kill him. And one day the sea creatures come out of the sea and drag Alex to an abandoned aquarium on a hill. While there, um, him and his friend Zoe have to try and save a dragon. How they go about saving this dragon is anybody's guess. But again, love the colour scheme of it. It has a gorgeous cover. And even Ash is thinking, yeah, that's beautiful. Next. Okay, the next one. The next one comes out in September. It got announced recently and I'm so excited, like I could cry. It is Which Way To Anywhere by Cressida Cowell. Ever since the end of the Wizards of One series, I've been itching for a new Cressida Cowell book and it's finally coming in September. I am so excited. This one follows K2 or Hero and his sister Isabird and they have to keep their family's magic a secret. K2 has the ability to draw maps that are beyond anybody else's imagination. However, what K2 doesn't know is that the maps he draws are real. They are real places that he can actually go and visit. K2's and Isabird's baby sister gets kidnapped and they have to travel to one of the places that K2 was drawn in order to save her. And Crescent Cowell is always incredible at writing stories that are incredibly imaginative, so bonkers, but also heartfelt and amazing. Honestly, I feel like ever since The Wizards of Wands, I, I don't know what Cressida Cowell can do next. You know, she's keeping me guessing. She's keeping me on my toes. So, which way to anywhere? is like my most anticipated book that's coming out in the near future. Look, and if there are any proofs, then How to Train Your Gavin should be on the list for them, okay? Just saying. The next one is Leela and the Blue Fox by Kerry Millwood Hargrave and Tom DeFreston. And I absolutely adored Julia and the Shark. And I think this is a standalone, like it's not a sequel to that. It's just, it stands on its own two feet, but it will have the same kind of vibe as Julia and the Shark, I think. And it has, you know, a beautiful cover and it's gonna look gorgeous on the shelf next to Julia and the Shark. Like I can't really summarize what this book is about because the summary of it is like just as gorgeous as what the book's gonna be like, I imagine. But it says Fox Way and begins to walk. She crosses ice and snow over mountains and across frozen oceans, encountering bears and birds beneath the endless daylight of an Arctic summer, navigating a world that is vast, wild, and wondrous. Meanwhile, Leila embarks on a journey of her own, finding her way to the mother who left her. On a breathtaking journey across the sea, Leila discovers herself and the mother she thought she'd lost with help from a determined little fox. Oh, it's based on the true story of an Arctic fox who walked from Norway to Canada in 76 days, a distance of 2,000 miles. Wow, I did not know it was based on a true story. But obviously it's gonna have that, you know, gorgeous Kieran Wood Hargrave whimsical writing style and the gorgeous illustrations of Tom DeFreston. Sign me up, sign me up right now. Oh, sorry, Ash. So that comes out in September as well. And the next two books come out in September too. So we have The Girl in White by Lindsay Curry. Super excited for it because I've loved Lindsay Curry's previous works. She is one of the best middle grade spooky writers out there at the minute. And this is her fourth? I think her fourth book. And this one follows Mallory who moves to Eastport. And Eastport is one of the most haunted places to visit. Mallory has been having nightmares ever since coming to Eastport and there is some kind of evil ghost or spirit that seems to be lurking around. And this leads Mallory to investigate a legend of Sweet Molly. The legend of Sweet Molly and honestly I've got chills already because have you heard the rhyme? Sweet Molly once lived in Eastport. Sweet Molly once loved to see. Sweet Molly lost Liam to the shadows. Now Sweet Molly is coming for ye. I absolutely love a creepy rhyme and this has it. 
This has it. I'm so excited. And then the last book is The Elemental Detectives by Patrice Lawrence. So this one is also going to be the first in a series and it is set in a really magical reimagining of London. London is lit up and brought to life by elementals. So we have dragons, fumists, chads and magogs. For centuries, of course, humans have been polluting the planet and these elementals have been trying to bring balance to it. There is a revenge fueled shepherdess who brings about a sleeping sickness on the city and there are some elemental detectives who have to try and stop her. This is going to be filled with fantastical creatures, epic adventures and quests, and middle grade fantasy is one of my favourite genres of all time. So I feel like this is going to be another one that is going to blow me out the water essentially. And again, this one comes out in September. So those are the 20 middle grade books that are on my immediate TBR that I need to read before the end of the year, or I have to unhaul them. But I am so excited for every single one of them. Like it's reinvigorating my love for middle grade. I had to take a break and it's making me clamour for middle grade again. All 20 of these books have a little sumk sumk that makes me want to eat it up right now. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment down below. Let me know if you're excited for any middle grades this year. A huge thank you to my patrons for being incredible, beautiful, patient people. I love you guys so much. If you want to join my Patreon or visit me on any social medias, then they are linked in the description box. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And it's goodbye from me, Ash and Tobu. Bye. Say bye. Say bye.